Friendship War, Chapter 6, Strange Galaxy. It's second period on Wednesday, and Hank whispers to me, Again? I can't tell what he said, but I nod anyway. Again? We're sitting in front row of the auditorium, and I'm turned halfway around in my seat so I can see the other kids as they arrive for our first sixth grade assembly. I need Hank to stop bothering me because I'm on a mission counting buttons and also keeping a running total in my head. 341, 349, 352, 355. When I can't quite see, I have to estimate. Flannel or long sleeve shirt, eight buttons. Button front sweater or short sleeve shirt, six buttons. Pullover polo shirt, three buttons. Pants or shorts, one button, maybe two. Skirt, one button. T-shirts, sweatshirts or sweatpants, zero buttons. Hank pokes me with his elbow. Mrs. Lang is looking at you. Here she comes. I hear him, but I keep counting anyway. Grace, face forward. This is not the time or the place for socializing. Under my breath, I say 363. I turn and sit back in my seat. I look up at Mrs. Lang. Sorry, I accept, except I wasn't socializing. I was collecting data. She frowns and shakes her head, eyes front. That's our assembly rule. I always feel sorry for teachers at assemblies. It seems like they're trying to show the principal and all the other teachers how their kids are just about perfect. But that's only a theory. Mrs. Lang walks on, her clipboard gripped in the crook of her arm. And I notice that she's wearing pants, a collared shirt, and a sweater. At least 15 buttons. I want to turn around again to try to pick up my button count, but I don't dare. It's too early in the school year to risk getting on Mrs. Lang's bad side. I've got her for homeroom, plus math and science. Although maybe Mrs. Lang doesn't really have a good side. Then it wouldn't matter, right? Another interesting theory. But I don't want to test it, not today. Instead, I try to estimate how much of the sixth grade had already arrived in the auditorium when Mrs. Lang made me stop counting? Probably about two thirds. So if the first two thirds of the kids were wearing about 360 buttons, then the remaining one third of the kids would be wearing about half that many, another 180, which means that today the whole sixth grade is wearing 540 buttons, approximately. Of course, those are just the buttons on the clothes the kids are wearing right now. There are lots more buttons on all their other clothes at home. The shirts and pants and jeans and shorts and dresser drawers, plus the skirts and other clothes on hangers and hooks and closets. And then there are the buttons on everybody's coats and jackets and raincoats. To get a scientific count of the sixth graders' buttons, I would have to ask every kid to go home, study all their clothes, count every button, and then fill out a form for me. Which isn't going to happen. Besides, this sudden urge to count buttons, I know, it's only a distraction. Something I'm doing to keep myself from worrying about what might happen at lunchtime right after this assembly. I almost never wake up early. But this morning at 6.15, I sat straight up in bed sweating. I had been dreaming about snowboarding down a mountainside and then an avalanche broke loose above me and suddenly that rushing hillside of snow turned into a towering wave of buttons trying to sweep me under, bury me. And the moment I got myself fully awake, I started to worry about lunch and buttons and the Ellie effect.
My thoughts keep spinning, and I begin to wonder how many buttons there are on the clothes of the other kids at school today, and the teachers too. And beyond the school, there are the parents of the kids at home or at work with buttons on their clothes, plus all the rest of the people of this town and this state and this country and this continent and this hemisphere and this planet. And what about the buttons on all the clothes, on all of the bodies buried in all the graveyards everywhere in the world? Gross, but true. That would add up to billions and billions more. I feel dizzy and I tip my head back and stare up at the ceiling of the auditorium. It's like I've accidentally pointed a telescope toward a strange galaxy and instead of stars and planets, I'm looking into an endless new sky filled with buttons. The assembly begins and the principal is at the podium on stage, waiting as the room gets quiet. Your teachers and I have known many of you for more than five years and we are so excited about the amazing year we've planned. It's going to be demanding and so far you're doing great. As all of us look ahead together, I'm hoping that Mrs. Porter keeps talking, but I'm having trouble listening. My hands are cold and it feels like I have a knot in the center of my stomach. I hate getting upset about everything, but to feel this upset about buttons, it's not even logical. Because really, who cares about buttons? No one even thinks about buttons. Unless one pops off and your pants fall down. I saw that in a cartoon, but there's no reason why it couldn't happen in real life. A button pops, gravity pulls, and pants fall. It's basic science. Simple cause and effect. Cause and effect. The first time I heard that phrase was during a second grade science lesson. It means that nothing happens without a reason. It means that events can always be studied and understood, which is so comforting. And suddenly, I'm absolutely sure that what I need here is more scientific thinking, more understanding, and less emotion. Except right now. I understand the cause of my worries perfectly, and the anxious feelings are only getting worse. Why? As soon as this assembly is over, I know that I'm going to stop by my locker.